Hey guys, at BV Manson here, the time has come. Let's get the camshaft and the rockers in the top end of this Honda Twin engine. And I have been uh, super paranoid about getting into this. I know how important it is to get this right. So I'm actually using three different resources to help me make sure that I get this all installed correctly. God, isn't that engine looking beautiful? I'm so excited to get this stuff rolling. First things first though, we need to get the cam fed through and uh, this can be a little tricky sometimes and it may take a little bit of patience to move it on through, but uh, first things first, let's start getting this uh, camshaft inside. The next step is to go over to your stator, which is why I installed this thing, and get your timing or your, your indicator lined up with LT, all right? We wanna get this thing lined up to LT, so basically just grab your 14 millimeter wrench, and on this, it's really close. I'm just gonna move it back just a little bit like this. Now, when you do this, you're gonna notice that when you take the wrench off, it's gonna move. So here's a little trick to uh, help you keep it in place. All right, to keep that thing on LT, what I like to do is just take my open end of my wrench like this and get a bungee cord, all right? I'm on like a little table. So I'm just gonna attach my bungee cord to this and then my pressure is coming this way. So I'm just gonna pull the bungee cord and then down here, you can't see it, but I'm wrapping my bungee cord around. Get that thing as precise as we possibly can. I don't know if it's like really that important, but then I'm just gonna link that right up to the leg of my table, and that bad boy is not gonna move. And here you can see I'm right on LT. Doop. And then I've got my bungee cord kind of wrapped, and then just right around the table, and that's gonna hold that right in position. All right, next up, grab your camshaft and the round end, not the spindly end, all right? Grab that end of it, and you're gonna go in through the right side of the engine. Now your end goal is to get this camshaft with this pin pointed straight up, okay? So the engine is in LT, all right? And then we also want our sprocket, which is hanging out down here. There's an L mark and a flat line on the actual black sprocket. That needs to be flat and with the, like flat with the, with the head here. Uh, let me show you that, because that's a little nuance to this thing. So that's the marking that I'm talking about. See that line, that line across there? You can also see that there is a small L symbol on that as well. So that needs to be flat and, you know, really per, uh, parallel with the top. So you can already see that uh, I might be off just a tooth. All right, with those kind of checks in place, now we can actually insert the camshaft. And, um, you know, really, I think these lobes go up and when you're moving it through, I'm just gonna actually try and eyeball it and make sure that I'm keeping this uh, pin pointed straight up. Now, if you look at this, there's a bunch of different shapes here. It's kind of a little jigsaw puzzle that you need to work your way through. So actually, before I do this, I need to get rid of my wire on my cam. Cause, or on, yeah, on the cam chain because I'm not gonna need that after this. So I'm just gonna hold it for now. And then again, that round end is gonna go in first. And then you're gonna watch, see how there's, there's spaces cut out of this thing. So these bolt holes here for your cam actually line up and they move right through that case perfectly. Now, the tricky part is getting it all to just go together smoothly. Let me give you a little bit better look straight down so you can see what's happening here. All right, here we are, I flipped the bike back over and now I'm gonna start trying to pull this, push this cam through. And again, on the, you know, the center part of this, this uh, cam sprocket, there's little shapes in it and you just gotta kind of carefully align everything so it goes in smoothly. Man, if you take the time to align all of those different things, it should go in pretty flawlessly and align right up with the bolt sections. So that is beautiful. Um, I actually feel really good about this. Um, looks like I may need to adjust. Oh, no, there. I think the damn thing just like fell right into place when I grabbed it. What a great sign. Let me kind of show you what I'm looking at here. All right, I gotta, gotta hold it in one place here with one hand, so it's gonna be a little tippy, but 
See how my pin is pointed straight up there? That's what you want. And then you want that line on your sprocket to be flat as well. So I'm feeling really good about that, pointing up, pointing up. We can start to uh, put these bolts in and a uh, couple nuances to those as well, because if we look at those, there's two different ones. All right, so here you can see the L mark. You guys see that? That is your L mark that is flat. And according to the manual, it says to grab the threaded bolt, the one with threads all the way on it, and insert that into the hole closest to the L mark. So that's that one. Now on this bolt, it's a really good idea <laughs> to actually use red Loctite, all right? So get some red Loctite and uh, do up your bolt good. Oops, plugged up, of course. Looks like I gotta poke a hole in it. All right, there we go. I got my threaded bolt, I got my red Loctite. See if I can get this thing started. This is kind of a tricky one. I remember having to take these out <laughs> and they were not fun. There's no washer or anything. Um, it's just, you know, just goes in there. Apparently it's a special hardened bolt. I get it started? I think so. It's hard to tell. Oh, come on. Big fumbly fingers. There we go. Got her going here. Just like that. And I'm going to go check real quick to see if there is a torque specification. Um, I'm not sure if there was. I don't recall seeing a torque specification on that. So let me check the book. And here you can see install the bolt, which is threaded all the way in the hole near the L mark. Then rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees, blah, 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 shoulder bolt, torque the bolts to 13 to 15 pounds. So now I'm going to grab my torque wrench and I'm going to go look at pounds and go to, so you're getting up to 15. Let's see, yeah, that's 15. And what was the spec again? The hell was it? 13 to 15 pounds. All right, so I'll go to 15, just like that. And then I'm gonna tighten up my bottom side. Now this is really, really tight, so I'm gonna try and do it with this weeble wobble <laughs> and uh, see if I can get this thing tight, but it won't fit any other way. So um, that's what I gotta do. All right, so before I torque this down, I'm actually going to rotate this engine 360 degrees so I can get that other bolt on there. So again, remember whenever you turn this, make sure that you're going counterclockwise. And we're gonna turn this around, just like that. We're gonna go just like that. I thought it said 360 degrees. The hell? Do, 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 do. Rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees, wrench on rotor, install the shouldered bolt. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna lock tight. Red Loctite, the good stuff. And then we will get this one started and then I'll go back and I'll torque all of this up as best as I can, honestly. I'm hoping this torque wrench is, is gonna work in this configuration. Yeah, and just notice guys, I'm really trying to follow the manual as best as I can. So I actually did not torque this until I had this other bolt in place. So let's go ahead and I think I'm just gonna have to hold this thing. Oh boy, I don't wanna mar anything up, that's for sure. Yeah, I just don't know if this is actually gonna work at all. I may have to just do, you know, tight according to Brian's standards. Yeah, I definitely think I was doing like more harm than good um, by doing that. So what I'm gonna do is grab this wrench and give that a good turn. And then I'm gonna reach down here. I'm gonna rotate my engine again. Oop. Come on, buddy. Oh, come on. Turn, just like that. And we'll go give it another, give it another whirl here. 
<laughs> I don't know. That's as tight as I'm going to get that bad boy, I think. It's got red Loctite on it. Let's go to the next step. All right, next step in the process is just to rotate the engine to make sure that your cam lobes are facing away from where your rocker arms are actually going to go. So my cam lobes are pointed, you know, kind of to the side or down. Um, so I should be in good shape there. Um, next, I guess we go back to the book. All right, now it's time to install the rockers. I've got everything laid out for these are the two that go here. And these are my two that go here. I've got all my pins. I've got brand new O-rings as well. So I need to pull these old O-rings out, put the new O-rings on, and I've got assembly lube. You're gonna wanna be pretty generous with this stuff during this step. Um, we wanna make sure that this stuff is all lubricated amazingly well. So let me go ahead and just pull off these kind of O-rings. I'll put the new ones on each one of my rockers. I mean, I don't think I have to show you this, right? This is pretty straightforward, pull it off and then just put it on. <laughs> I'll do this for each one of my rockers, and uh, then we'll get to installing these. All right, let's uh, do it. What you're basically gonna do is you're gonna take your rocker arm apart, okay? Now again, don't forget the assembly lube, okay? Lube this stuff up really well, okay? Do, do, do. I'm gonna be super liberal with this stuff, all right? And what you're gonna do, so you're going to go in, straight in. As you go in, you want to be spinning these, okay? A little bit of dirt or something on that. You want to push that in, give it a nice spin. As you're going in, what you want to do is you want to position your rocker arm, okay? So your rocker arm goes this way. Narrow end is actually going to reach through here and touch the top of the valve. So what you're going to do is you're going to reach in, drop your valve in, and then push that piece in. It should go very, very, very easily. Let me do another one and show you from the top. All right, so here we go with the shaft. Okay, we're gonna stick this in, turn it as you're going. Okay, just let that sit here. Then I'm gonna grab this rock around. I just wanna make sure that you guys see exactly how these kind of orient. It sits in there like that, okay? So, man, this is gonna be really tough. Oh, wow. Oh my God, can my phone like stay just like that? No, of course not. Ah, look at that magic. All right, so I'm just gonna pick up the, the, the rocker arm. I'm gonna pull this back out and you're gonna drop. You're gonna take this end of the rocker arm, slip it through, okay, just like that. Line it up. And again, when you insert these, make sure that you spin them into position. And there we go. See, bam, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, another little thing to note on these, if you look at the ends, there's a little indicator, there's a little line on each one of these. See that? What you want is you want to point those out, okay? So you want those both pointed out. Repeat the same thing. That's our first two. They're in, but I still gotta get these in. So go ahead, repeat this process on the other side. All right, we got all four in, all four are hanging out there. I'm just do a little bit of cleanup here. Um, and while I'm doing this cleanup, I'm gonna do something that's gonna probably, or I'm, at least I'm thinking that it should help me with this next step um, because this is a pretty tight fit in getting these side covers on. So what I'm actually gonna do is go drop these in the deep freeze for 10, 15 minutes, and hopefully that'll shrink them up just enough so that when I can come back in and start throwing these together, it's gonna go together really, really quick. But, uh, whoo, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you guys, I kinda had my doubts that I would ever get this engine back together this far. So, so far, so good. Let's go drop these in the deep freeze. I just want to show you the difference in these books, man. So here's the climber, and then here's that book that I actually really, really like. So when it comes to installing the side covers, here, all it says here in the next step, uh, da, 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 I rotated it, I didn't have any binding. Install the screws securing the side covers at both ends of the cam case. That's all it says, okay? Now if I move over to this other book, it says, uh, okay, we get to here 11, 
Uh, cam lobe should be facing down for easy installation of the rockers. Install the tack drive and point housing, making sure to coat the inside of the bearings before installing uh, them to the cam. Do not use force to install the housings, hand pressures, all that's necessary. If the cam is in the right position, all lobes facing down 90 degrees after top dead center, compression stroke left cylinder. So the amount of detail that is in this book <laughs> compared to this book is absolutely staggering. I just wanted to show you that. Um, the next step, according to everything that I have read um, and, and watched for this is to actually get the side covers mounted. So I'm actually gonna go retrieve one of those covers from the freezer and we're gonna see if we can get these bad boys on. All right, here we go. We got an icy cold uh, points housing. Again, I'm gonna take lube. I'm gonna lube up the inside of this as per the instructions. All right, so I'm gonna lube or uh, lubricate this very, very well before I try to push this thing on there. And what we are going to do is here is where your wiring comes out. That's gonna face down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly insert this onto the housing, okay? Now, it says that hand pressure should be all that is needed. Oh, God, stop, 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 stop. What am I doing? I forgot to put the gasket in. All right, I got my gasket, okay? Don't forget to put your gasket on. This one is a little misleading. You gotta really take a look at it uh, to make sure that it is in position here. Um, we're gonna take that, take my freshly thing. Good thing it's still cold. I'm gonna orient that just perfectly. I'm gonna make sure that my gasket stays in position. And let's do this again, man. Man, I'm so glad that I remembered to put that gasket in. That would have really, really, that would have been a sour note <laughs> to end the day on for sure. So, or to kind of start the day on for sure. So now again, let's see if I can be as lucky as I was the first time in getting this thing lined up and on there. And when they say, you know, hand pressure, it should go on easy. If it's kind of binding for you, go and make sure that all of your rockers have slack, all right? All of your lobes should be down and you should have a lot of free play in all of your rocker arms, okay? If you do that, it will slide on. If you don't, if these aren't, or these are binding up or any of your lobes are up, your cam is actually gonna be kind of crooked and it's gonna be really hard to get that thing into position. Now we should be able to just push this on just like that. And yeah, that went on perfectly. It all comes down to your cam, of your, your rockers, having a little bit of free play in each one of those to be able to do that next. Up, just grab your your new bolts. I've actually got new hex head or uh, Allen head bolts from Common Motor that I'm going to install. There's four of them: one here, one here, one here, and one there. So I put a little blue Loctite on each one of these. I'm going to go to town and get this side put on. All right, I've got all those started. Now I'm just going to go and get these tightened up. I checked the manual and they did not have like a specific torque value for these. So I'm just going to go with tight. I'm going to put them on there tight. I've got the blue lock tight. Got a good seal all the way around. I'm just going to go nice and snug with all of those. Let's move on to the other side. All right, hopefully things go as smoothly on this side. I'm gonna carefully make sure that we've got the right gasket oriented the right way. It is. I've lubed up the shaft on all of this. This is ready to go. So I'm gonna position this. Remember, your out, your uh, your uh, input for your tack drive is pointing towards the front, and this thing should. Oh, oh, caught my gasket just a little bit. I'm actually gonna move that up. This thing should lift and push right into position. I think I might need to move. Got one lobe popping up just a little bit. So I'm gonna see if I can just back up the engine just a little to take a little bit of pressure off of this one. And that's, that's all it really requires is, you know, just to take the pressure off of that to be able to push this 
on there nice and straight. You're not supposed to have to force it. I've got play. I need a little bit more play on that one. Kind of a finicky deal. It's tough to tell. You can kind of just hear it. And guys, the only thing that was holding me up here was that this uh, valve adjustment had spun on me a little bit. So as soon as I positioned these and got these both pointing outward, um, the thing slides right on. So just keep track of that while you're putting this thing together. Make sure that that index mark on that pin is pointing out. Mine was spun towards the inside, and uh, that's what was hanging me up. I like it. We can double check to make sure that we've got that in place. But I'm gonna put these four bolts in and get this thing all torqued up. And then we've gotta do a little bit of a measurement to make sure everything is good with the, uh, what do they call it, axial play in the uh, camshaft. All right, that is in place. The next thing I'm gonna do before I test this bad boy out is I am going to take just a little bit of assembly lube and put a drop onto each one of these areas here. Kind of wish I would have done that right away. And let's see, God, looking through a camera and then doing this, it's really hard, guys. Filming this stuff is hard. <laughs> now, let's see what kind of movement we have on this engine, 14 millimeter wrench. Let's give her a rotation. Feels good. Not seeing any binding. I think, doggone, we might have done it. I'm gonna really lube up these lobes as good as I possibly can uh, before I move any further. All right, these lobes are all <laughs> lubed up, ready to go. If I go down, and uh, here, let me double check. Let's get on L. T right there, just like that. And then we will go up top and what do we got? We've got, that's pointing straight up. And that looks pretty damn flat to me, that line at the top. So I think we did it guys. One last thing to do, I'm gonna grab my washer and my adjusting lock nuts for each of these and just put these kind of loosely in place. I know they're around here someplace. <laughs> I've got them all laying around. Guys, I'm feeling so good about this. This feels so great. But I just don't want to lose those. So I'm just going to put those in place loosely for now. And uh, here's my other ones. I'm going to go ahead and put those on. And then, you know, we're going to have to adjust the valves and, uh, you know, all that good stuff. So, you know, more to come. I need to do a little bit more research because there is a measurement um, for side play or axial movement in the camshaft. I do not personally see a giant gap here um, on this camshaft. I would assume that there should be a little bit of space there, right? Um, so that's got me wondering just a little bit. So like if I turn this, I don't really see a huge gap on either side of this. I feel like I kind of should. It is acting just like it would, um, like if I was trying to do timing or something like that. You know, it's like springing it and, and moving the, the wrench around. It doesn't want to really stay on, on LT. You got to kind of hold it in place. So I think it's okay. I may not need the spacers. When I took this engine apart, there were no spacers. So um, yeah, that may explain it because it's tight. It's moving free. I think we're there, guys. I feel really good about this. I'm gonna stop this video here. Um, I will do a, the next video I'll do on this uh, axial play. Um, but for right now, it doesn't look like it's gonna be a huge issue because you know, they were saying anything more than a millimeter and I would have to shim the side, but I'm not seeing any play in this 
at all. So anyway, we shall see. I need to dive into the books a little bit more. But there we go, guys. That is how it is done. Um, we're getting really, really close to uh, giving this thing a nice test fire. If you guys enjoy the videos, please subscribe. Also, follow along Instagram and Twitter at BV Matson. And guys, if you run across a video that you really like, please thumbs up those. Um, that really does help the, the videos be found. And I also just love it when you guys comment. You guys are, are leaving me some really thoughtful comments. And... Uh, yeah, it's really helpful. I've actually got a couple things that people have said, hey, Brian, you missed this or you should have done that. And uh, I'll go back and uh, dig in to all of that stuff at a later time. But man, we got the camshaft and the rockers in and it's marked up on the LT mark with the L top and we've got a flat line at the top as well. So thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.